Welcome to the BBC Money Clinic, the place where our relationship with our finances and each other comes under the spotlight. We've brought the clinic to Miami in the United States, a playground for millionaires. But for many people, rising prices and falling wages make it very hard to keep up. Today, we're inviting people to come here and get honest with one another about their finances. In the United States, it's estimated that around 27 million people don't have medical insurance. It means that when their health suffers, so do their finances. Manuel and Jackie live in South Florida with their four children. He's a construction supervisor and she's a teacher and they're both playing financial catch-up. You want more money too? Okay. Budget wise, we have our ups and downs. We're still working on it. I'm more of a saving kind of person. And me, on the other hand, I'm more of an optimistic person where I know what's coming in, I know what I can use out based on the budget, but then I kind of say, oh well, there's a little wriggle, wiggle room over here. What uh -oh. is it? Income tax. You have to pay. I don't want to be controlled. Obviously, every couple argues about money, you know. Why you spend on this? You shouldn't have. I, you know, it's, uh, I think it's normal, but uh, I don't want to do it. We've made Manuel and Jackie an appointment with Jean Thera, a Florida-based financial therapist. She's a certified financial planner and a family and marriage counselor. How do you understand your financial habits? Can you explain them to me? Well, we pretty much have had a lot of financial crisis with um, identity theft, credit card debt, mm. um, also medical bills. My husband had gotten sick before, mm -hmm. and that's that's when we really got into a financial crisis. Was when he got sick, mm -hmm. and we both ended up out of work. Oh, we've goodness. and many different times we've had um, job issues in the sense of getting laid off or starting over or mm -hmm. having his own business and things like that. And are you working now? Yes, yes. I've been okay. working for the past four years nonstop. Thank God. Okay. And how about you? Um, I've been working now for the past three years, stable full-time as a teacher. Okay. So you have six people in the family. Yes, right. ma'am. That's a lot to manage. <laughs> We, we used to have a lot of arguments before about mm -hmm. finances. That was pretty much the only type of arguments we would have would be finances. I'll come in with bags of groceries and he'll ask me, well, how much did that all cost? And I'll say, don't worry, I use my account. It sounds like you're triggered by that um, interrogation that you're getting, is that? Well, and when she answers it that way, then it triggers me. <laughs> like, how will you, you just went through a register 15 exactly. minutes ago, how will you not know if it was 75 or five mm -hmm. or 79? Mm -hmm. I mean, and then I rebuttal. If you want to know the exact amount, go mm -hmm. check. So my first um, suggestion is that when you're triggered, it's probably not the right time to talk about it. So <laughs> I know it's something you want to talk about, and I'd be happy to do so, but let me put the bags down and get the kids some dinner, and let's open the bank account and take a look. In the moment, I know that's hard to do, but... No, I'm not going to open it. I tell him. Okay. Go yeah, she's a go very go strong... Right. So Character. I'm, I'm wondering about that. <laughs> you, Do you see, not see value in tracking? And Do no I see the value, value in, in tracking? tracking? I see the value in tracking. He can go ahead and go look and track. Okay. But I'm not going to sit there and give him an explanation of what I just purchased. So is it your position that you're operating within the budget with these purchases? That's why I answer him no. That's yes and no. Okay. Yes, because I use my account. But at the same token, no, I don't operate the budget because it's not something that we've planned on. If we already mm. did the groceries, then he's questioning, well, why did you have to go back to the, to the grocery store again? Okay. So this purchase in your mind might be an extra. Like it we already had extra. food in the house. We it already is an clothes. extra. You go to the house and okay. there's food. Mm -hmm. It might not be the food that want to eat at that moment, but sure. there's plenty of food. Okay. And that's where, you know, my growing up, my background is completely different from hers. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm Cuban. I come from a country. I never had anything. Mm. So to me... Um, correct that. Correct it. Well, it's not that I didn't have anything, Thank but you. I didn't have everything I wanted. There you go. Okay. 
And me growing up, I didn't have everything either. Maybe the thing to do is to view the budget as a living document. It's not something that's cut in stone. Things happen and you need to have potentially weekly or monthly or quarterly meetings to revise the budget. Yeah, that's... I, that's, that's, that's that. I don't like talking. I said the budget, we said the budget, we sat down Every in January. Every beginning of the year, yeah. Okay. And we said the budget for the year. Yeah. And it's got to match at December. I'll go crazy. I'm wondering if you agree that the budget is what it needs to be because of the exercise you went through in January and it was in your best interest to stay within these parameters, okay? Yeah, we lean so, everything. So if that's the agreement, then in any particular month, if for some reason you exceeded the budget in, let's say, the food area, then you have to consider that you no longer have the opportunity to do that in the following month and something has to give. Mm. Maybe you don't go to the movies or maybe the kids don't have snacks and you yeah. make cookies that, that I don't, month. I don't, I'm okay with that, but then Jackie is not willing to, and I get it, to make the kids suffer for a bad decision. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, I have more has, of an emotional it, attachment. It has to be done on a developmentally appropriate um, mm -hmm. basis, but children should be learning about these des decisions, these oh, choices. Well, knock on wood, thank God. I know my kids, they don't throw themselves on the floor in the yeah, shopping center right. if they don't get their stuff. That's one thing that we taught them. So maybe they'll young. understand a conversation where, gee, we did all these fun things last month. This is the month we have to step back and not do those things. I think you can model that for them and you'll you know, be, reap the benefits when they're older. But as Jean was about to find out, Jackie and Manuel's arguments about the budget are rooted in their own childhood experiences. His family was more dynamics of what the dad said went. In my dynamics, it was more like what my dad said went. My mom would give a little rebuttal, but then she would give in. And I hated that. And I would always argue with my mom, mm -hmm. like, why do I have to make that? Why do, I have to do that? why do you have to go get him a glass of water? He's right next to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I can see how this is a so, trigger for you. But in, when you think about it, do you really feel like you're not being heard, Manuel? Are you getting? Sometimes I do, and he knows it, because I tell him, like, every time we get to an argument about this, like, okay. every time it has to be something with money, it's my fault. And so he says, well, kind of like, if the shoe fits, wear it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, that, but the, that's why I feel controlled. So standing up for yourself without putting your partner down is a skill that might benefit you. And it takes a lot of practice. It sounds like you have some practice from your original family where you said, no, why do I need to do that? It sounds, I keep that's kind of what I do with him. Yeah. But at the same I time, I, I, I keep telling her, you know, forget about your family. It's, it's important to validate that this is what she's experiencing. So Why am I going to follow somebody else's mistake? Let me make mm -hmm. my own. But when you make the mistake, and I explain it to you, you don't change it. The next time we have a financial issue, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't understand. Why did you spend so much? So I would tell him, okay, well then you spend a week with the kids and see how much you spend and I'll go work on it. He says, great, I'll, I'll, I'll do that gladly. So then he'll turn it into like, kind of like a joke, like, yeah, well you go work like I work and mm -hmm. I'll take sure. care. I'm sure I won't spend as much. This isn't very productive, is it? So, <laughs> going back, you know, when you're emotionally triggered, it's not the time to have a conversation. But the process of calming yourself and then coming back is really a great skill. You know, even the happiest and most successful couples argue. Oh, yeah. So, learning how to argue and how to come back and talk about those issues is a great skill. Yeah, that's one thing we have to learn, which will take your advice on, is kind of revisit it, mm -hmm. maybe yeah, two weeks later. Right. Yeah, we usually don't. <laughs> and work it down. Because mm -hmm. okay. then, you know, I'll, I'll be, but I already, we already talked about it. Yeah. And that's one thing, he doesn't like to repeat things. I don't. Mm. I don't mind repeating it four different ways. Right. He doesn't. I'm the explainer. He's sort of like straight to the point. So if he's already said it one time, it's kind of like, that's it. I already told you before, that's it. And me, it's like, no, well, let me explain mm -hmm. why this happened or why I spent this. And I'm like, but you knew we right. already talked about this. Right. So. And that's my fault. I, I know I gotta be more lenient, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, listen as well. Yeah. What were the top tips for you? Basically, revisit instead of arguing take a breather, do what we have to do, you know, go on with life and then come back and revisit the topic 
And our feelings at the And our feelings at a different time. Yeah, take a break and then talk mm. about money. Another wow. tip she also gave us was to uh, revisit our budget yes. if we spend more on a certain area uh -huh. so we can account for it on the next month. I yes. see. Well, thank you very much for coming in and best of luck for the future. All right. Thank, thank you very you. much. Good luck with the arguing too. Thank Just you. <laughs> Everyone's financial circumstances are different, so options that may suit some people may not suit others. That's it from the BBC Money Clinic here in Miami.